Tone Empire plugins have sent me their latest flagship compressor, La Creme. But will it ambient? Stick around to find out. Hey, it's Marcus from Holly Sweet. Today I'm going to review the La Creme Mix Bus Processor by Tone Empire plugins. Firstly, thank you very much to Tone Empire plugins for giving me a copy of this for review. I'll put a link to the plugin in my description down below. It's not an affiliate link. I'm not affiliated with them in any way, and there is no expectation that I give them any particular kind of review. So I've been putting this through its paces over the last day or two tried it on a bunch of different kinds of music and the thing I'm most interested in is whether it's going to be useful for ambient artists so let's jump into it to see how it fares and if you're new here and you haven't checked out the free resources section of my website why not take a look there's a link in the description all the resources have been tailored for ambient and experimental artists for both producing and releasing your music okay on to the good bit so the creme is a mix bus processor it is a compressor which also has an EQ and it's also got this kind of expander section in the side here. The kind of compressor that it's based off is a variable Moo compressor. I believe the specific one they've modeled it off is the Manly Moo, which you might be familiar with. These kinds of compressors are known for being particularly smooth. They are also tube based in the physical version, which is why they've referred to it here as a modern American tube compressor. So they're obviously trying to emulate that sound in the software version. For those of you who aren't familiar with what variable Moo means, in a compressor so it means the more that you raise the input level the more aggressive the ratio is going to be so the more aggressive the compression is going to come down as you raise that input level it doesn't have its own ratio switch it's automatically calculated by the circuitry as you're raising that input it's got a pretty basic interface so if you look here you can see obviously there's the input dial there's the output dial there is just a switch for attack so you've got fast or slow there's also just a switch for ratio, which is compressor or limiter. And the only thing you really have a lot of control over is the recovery, which is the release time. So you can go anywhere from fast at number five here to slow at number one. Um, we've also got wet dry, so that turns off the effect. We've got, you can completely turn off the compressor and just use the EQ section if you like. They also have this thing called Ultra X, for if, if I scroll down here, it says, high sample rate mode, anti-aliasing models, more analog sounding. So I think what this is referring to is a kind of oversampling, which means it internally raises the sample rate of the effect so that you get a cleaner sound so it doesn't sound as digital according to the introductory video here also uses some other kind of modeling that apparently is better than just a standard algorithm I think it might be they use the word neural so I think it may be AI based but basically in practice when you turn it on if you have things set to kind of more aggressive settings, then it will sound a little bit better. So in addition to the compressor, we've also got this EQ section here, which you can switch between pre or post. So either you can feed the EQ going into the compressor or have it be done after you've done the compressing. It's pretty, pretty basic. It's only got a set number of different frequencies that you can choose. The middle two ones are bells and the left and the right over here are both shelves. And you've also got a low pass and a high pass if you need them. Sorry, high pass and low pass. That's right. And this over here is a stereo expander. So it allows you to basically it works the opposite of the compressor and expander brings up the dynamics when you cross the threshold. So it allows you to make things more lively either in the side channel or in the middle channel or in the lows, you can do the same thing. So between the switch between expanding the mid channel or expanding the side channel the highs i think start at three kilohertz and up and the low is 300 hertz and down variable mu compressors are known for being particularly smooth because they're what's called a soft knee compressor they don't trigger in a very quick way when they cross the threshold so in that case you do get a much smoother response than much more aggressive compressors. So let's see it in action. So let's start with a single instrument and in ambient music, the kind of instrument that might need a compressor would be something that has a lot of transients and that may not be particularly even in volume. So I've just made a real short example loop here. a random kind of pluck synthesizer sound 
Uh, I'm going to add um, a bit of an auto pan here and it's just there to randomize the volume so that it's not perfectly consistent. Okay, so you can hear that it's not perfectly consistent. So the reason why I've done this is because we wanted to get the compressor to try and make it even. So this is just an example of the worst kind of issue you might have with uh, this kind of track to show you what the compressor will actually do. So let's play it again and then I'll put the compressor on halfway through and we'll see what happens. Okay, turning it on. So it's even things out really, really nicely. And in a very smooth way, it's not grabbing those loud transients or pulling them down or anything. It's very kind of creamy as per the name. And obviously if you're using something that only has a little bit of variance, it's just gonna pull that together just a little bit nicer. So for example, if I turn off the auto pan and then we just listen to the thing one more time. And then we turn on the compressor again. And the added benefit of this is that we're getting a little bit of grit from that kind of analog emulation. I've also added our expanders on here as well. So if we turn off the expander and then turn it back on. All right, some bonus width. Um, and as per the instructions on the video, we know that it shouldn't be messing with the phase. So if we go back over here while I turn it back on, we should see that the phase doesn't make much of a difference. So we're hovering at around point plus point eight ish. If I turn this on, boom. You're getting that width. It's coming down a little bit further, but that's pretty sweet. So I turned it all the way over to the sides. Pretty wide, but not making much of a difference in terms of the phase. So that's pretty sick. I've also done a little bit of work in the EQ. Maybe we can uh, tinker with that a bit more. So. Let's hear that with it off. Come on. Okay, maybe a little bit of set it down a little bit here. Let's try it again. Pretty sick. So just from that one instrument, we've gotten a pretty cool sound out of it. Um, now obviously there aren't a lot of other uses that you might need it for its compression qualities inside uh, for a single track in ambient. But when we get to the master bus processing, uh, we're gonna find some more uses for it there. All right, now let's look at how to use the compressor in a mix bus situation. So here, this is a mix that I did for Yumi Iwaki called Yumoya, beautiful track. Let's just listen to a little excerpt of it. So you can hear we've got this kind of main drone pad sound and then a lot of kind of small bits and pieces that are popping out left and right, a little bit kind of spiky and then ducking back down again. So this is a perfect example of where this kind of compressor might be useful because it would be nice to be able to get just a little bit more glue in that mix, getting those little spiky bits feeling like they're kind of fitting in, letting that drone kind of pull up a little bit and everything just kind of sit nice together. So let's see what happens when we turn on the compressor. So immediately it feels a little bit more together, very subtly, it's not a big difference, but 
you can feel that that pad has kind of uh, started to dominate the mix a little bit more and everything feels like it's kind of coming out of the pad rather than uh, coming around it now. And this is a great track to use the expanders on, so I'm going to add a little bit to the sides and a little bit to the bottom. I'm going to expand the bottom in the sides this time. Let's just check that with it off. And with it on. This kind of feels a bit fuller. And as before, if we notice over here on the imager that it hasn't messed with our phase, which is great. I did notice when I was trying this out earlier that the phase of this mix originally was very close to the edge. It was right around that zero mark. And turning on the sides in the lower end for the expander did knock it a little bit out. So even though they do say in the introduction video that this shouldn't mess with your phase, it will if you're right on the edge. So just make sure that your mix is already nicely above that zero in the positive correlation before you start using these expanders because they may still affect, particularly in the low, they may still affect your phase. All right, and I've added a few uh, EQs as well for a bit of fun. So let's listen to the whole mix with the Lacrim off and then back on again to hear what kind of difference we've made in total. So it's off right now. Now it's on. So I think that EQ has made quite a big difference to the... Yeah. That 330 hertz has made it kind of feel a lot creamier. So now everything kind of fits together nicely. I mean, really, it's made quite a nice difference, even though, once again, that this compressor is very, very subtle. I think it, in certain circumstances, like this one, it's just enough to kind of bring things a little bit closer together. Lastly, we come to the mastering part. There are two ways you can use this in mastering. You can use it as a compressor, or you can use it as a limiter. So this track I've got here is one of mine. Um, which is relatively dynamic. Let's test it out with the limiter first. First, let's just listen to the original. Now let's turn on the limiter. Let's go back to the original. So I don't know about you, but it, to me, it sounds a little bit flat now. Let's try the limiter against the compressor and see what that sounds like. So we're on limiter, now to the compressor. It's back to the limiter. Back to the compressor. So I would say here, to my ears, it sounds like the compressor keeps things a lot more open, even though we're using the same kind of aggressive input amount. So it's still got a relatively strong ratio. So I think personally that I would much prefer to use this as a compressor than as a limiter in a mastering situation, just because it seems like the limiter is a little bit too aggressive. Obviously we can turn it down so we can test it. Let's test it with slightly lower settings to see whether that makes much of a difference. Okay, so we're in compressor. Limiter. Uh, limiter. Yeah, so even on lower settings, it still feels too compressed. And obviously we can mess around with those settings a little bit, but 
my feeling is, especially because I already have a limiter that I know and trust, that I would much prefer to use this as a compressor because it's going to be a lot less destructive. It's going to be a lot easier to kind of work with. So let's switch it back to compressor again and see if we can do a little bit of mastering with this, mess around with the EQ and get our expanders in as well and see what we can make of it. Alright, I like what that's doing. Let's add a little bit of maybe even to the free, let's see what happens. That's quite fun. very subtle but I like what it's doing there it's brought everything together a little bit more and I've got these additional EQs and the expanders here to give a little bit more fun so you could similar to the mix bus you could if you knew what you were doing use this for mastering all I would recommend is adding a separate limiter just because I don't think this I don't think the limiter is its best function um, I think it would be much better served as a compressor, but I think it does once again, similar to our previous examples, that it is a very smooth and a very gentle kind of compressor. So you can use it almost as much as you like without causing too much trouble. And don't forget, of course, you do have a mix knob here. Um, be careful with the latency though. You may find that it makes it difficult to run it in parallel. Let's just see if it's going to work for me here. Okay. I've had experiences where my other plugins cause enough latency that the mix doesn't, um, that the mix knob doesn't really work properly. But here I think it's quite, I think it's doing its job. So yeah, you, even just to add a little bit more texture, I think it would be pretty cool tool in the arsenal. And I just thought this was kind of cool that if you turn it all the way up, you can get some pretty cool effects, especially if you have a really fast attack and fast recovery. Uh, it gets pretty gnarly, but still in a smooth way. It's kind of cool. So this is my track, Ataxia. <laughs> And now with Black Raymond. Off. And on. Turn on our Ultra X here. Let's 
So you can hear it sounds like really gnarly, particularly like that texture in the top end. Like, I probably tweaked this a lot more because I'm missing a lot of the upper mids now. It feels like it's kind of crushed it a little bit too far, but don't forget you can also use this in parallel. Um, so anyway, I just thought that was a really cool effect that it, you can kind of similar to the sound toys devil lock, which is one of my favorite plugins to play with when I'm composing. I feel like this can also be abused in that way too, if you wanted to. So Le Creme, does it ambient? I think yes, does a pretty good job. It's pretty gentle. It's got a great analog vibe to it. You've got a couple of different ways to EQ. I really like that you've got post and pre. So you can either drive it to hell if you really want, like make that bass absolutely slam and sound like Tim Hecker or something, or you can add it in post just to add a little bit of extra sparkle to the track. It's really versatile. I like that it can do its job incredibly transparently, even for example, in my earlier single instrument example where I had quite big variances in volume, it smoothed it out without really making it sound like it was doing anything at all, which is fantastic. It also means when you put it on something that's not particularly dynamic, you can still get a little bit more glue and a little bit more cohesion to everything without it sounding like it's taking over the mix. So I think that's really cool. A couple of things I didn't like, obviously the limiter is not great. And look, that could just be me getting the settings wrong. The only other things I didn't really like were that the knobs in the EQ can be very aggressive. Basically, I'm used to using analog EQs where there's quite a lot of play in them. For example, like the Manly Passive, you can really crank it before it makes a huge difference. But I had a look in Plugin Doctor and I did notice that the bells, particularly in the EQ, are quite sharp. So it's very easy to overdo it. So you have to be very, very gentle and only add them a little bit at a time. You just have to be very careful. So I would recommend this for ambient artists who are looking for just a little bit of compression, particularly ones who aren't as confident with compression and just want to add a little bit of kind of finish to their music, a little bit of polish, because it will it is pretty forgiving and unless you're using really aggressive settings, it's not going to cause you that much trouble. So it's, it's the kind of thing you can slap on something, you know, just add it a little bit if you like, and then it just gives you a little bit extra something. Currently, the price for this, as the time I am releasing this video, is $39 US, which I think is an absolute bargain for something like this. The standard price is $79 US, so I would recommend, if you're interested, probably jumping on it now, or maybe waiting to see if they do a Black Friday sale or something later down the track. But I think for the amount that you're paying right now, it's really fantastic value. It shouldn't be a replacement, for example, for like an entire mastering rig or an entire mixing rig, but I think it's, it's the kind of thing you can have on hand that you can throw on when your tracks are just missing a little bit of something and you've tried everything else and maybe you just need that little bit of kind of analog sound, a little bit more cohesion. Um, a little bit more liveliness to your track. Well, that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching as always. I hope you enjoyed my review. If you like this plugin, don't forget to check the link in the description below. It's currently on sale. And while you're there, don't forget to check out my other free resources if you haven't already. If you're not following the channel, but you enjoyed this video, please do subscribe and give it a like. You'll be supporting one of the very few ambient and experimental focused engineering channels on YouTube. And I'll throw some more videos in the corner here if you'd like to learn more about mixing and mastering ambient and experimental music. Until next time, keep making music. Cheers.